Um, what are you? What, what did you? What's your experience there? What brought you to go there? That's a good question. Um, I I went first when I was ten. Ten. And, wow. Yeah. And I went with one of my parents. Um, and he. Which one? My father. And he. Um, I know your father. <laughs> <laughs> I get that sometimes. Yeah. Um, he was um, very involved, both of my parents were very involved in the Central American, um, the, move, the solidarity movement with Central America, specifically during, with Nicaragua during the revolution there. And so when um, it came out about the um, assassination of six Jesuits in the Catholic University in El Salvador and their housekeeper and her daughter, the eight of them were assassinated by graduates of the School of the Americas in 1989. Um, and Father uh, Roy Bourgeois became the leader of this movement when he found out about this, and he started having these yearly commemorations of their death at Fort Benning, Georgia, and Fort Benning is where the, um, these men who killed these innocent people um, were trained. And so they started doing these yearly events um, in November always to commemorate the lives and the martyrship of these eight individuals. And so in 1997, which was the, was the first year that we went as um, a faith community originally from Minnesota, and so a group of us took a van down. And then the next year we took two vans down. And then the year after that we took a bus down. Um, and so, and it just kept growing and growing. But it's interesting that you mentioned that since 9-11, there have been these yeah. huge restrictions to getting on the base. And I think it's because of how difficult it is to see people I mean, how much striking it is to see people commit civil disobedience yeah. because some of the first years I was there, tens of thousands of people would cross the line and choose to risk arrest by crossing onto a military base. Um, and then after 9-11, they decided that we must all be terrorists. Um, and so they started sending FBI photographers into the crowd. They started checking us for metal detect with metal detectors to see if we were bringing anything in. Um, they started trying to drown out our testimony with um, the loudest, like, God bless America music you could find, as if we weren't being patriots by questioning and holding our government accountable. Um, and so it was a really unique experience for me to go every year. This is just something that we did the weekend before Thanksgiving. We would just hop on a bus, drive for 24 hours, um, stay there for 36 hours, and drive 24 hours back to Minnesota. So we got a little tired by the time we got back, right? But it was worth it. Um, and then I was so lucky that in last year, last summer, I was able to get an internship with the School of the Americas Watch at their Latin American office. And Patrick Sudlow is here and was with me at that there event. Is, um, so up, Patrick. Patrick. Stand up. Stand up. Um, <laughs> and so. other interns of being there in Venezuela um, when the coup hit in Honduras, or when School of the Americas graduates um, created a coup in Honduras is the better way to put it. And so we were in Venezuela, a, company, or a country that had just experienced a similar attempted coup earlier in the decade, and when they saw what was happening in Honduras, everything was lining up the same, right? So um, I don't know how many people are familiar with the coup that happened in Honduras last year. Okay, um, so there was, so uh, two graduates of the School of the Americas basically got together and said that they were afraid of the leftist turn that Honduras was taking um, because the president of Honduras, who was elected in Mel Zelaya, um, was um, interested in rewriting um, the Constitution to prevent the U.S. from having a foreign military base there. He wanted, he just wanted his country to be sovereign. I mean, if the Honduras government wanted to have a military base in Miami, I think most of us would say, thank you, but no, <laughs> you can't do that. Um, and so they just wanted the same thing for their country. And so uh, the military, um, who is really, who is really supported by the United States military and the United States government, freaked out um, and decided to have a coup and took over the country. They um, woke up the president at like five o'clock in the morning with guns and said, get out or you're dead. And so he fled um, and has not been able to uh, re return as the president and they have reelected, or they've elected a new president, but under a lot of just problems. And then the re leaders of this resistance have just been um, threatened, assassinated, and it's a really um, horrible situation in Honduras that we don't really talk about here in the United States because we don't want to acknowledge the role that we had in this. So what's been really amazing for me being part of the School of the Americas Watch movement is this new perspective that we have about solidarity. And so you talking about Kathy Kelly going to meet with the parents 
uh, or the family members of people who are being killed. Um, and the conflict overseas is very similar. So we're trying to figure out how can we hear, instead of telling um, grassroots organizations in Honduras that this is what you should be doing. No, how can we support the efforts that are happening on the ground, support the resistance movements towards the increased militarization of Latin America? Um, and so for us, uh, for me, that's been my experience of School of the Americas Watch. It's been a long one. <laughs> But it's been a really um, unique experience. How, how do you see uh, the School of the Americas Watch having changed since you've been part of the organization and part of the movement? Well, um, as I said, I was a little bit of a late comer in terms of actually being at the School of the Americas. And certainly, there was an escalation after 9-11. Everything was really escalated after 9-11. Uh, that had nothing to do with with that, you know, I mean, uh, when you think about the fact, for example, they passed in the Patriot Act, they passed this thing about the borders and the fences at the border and all of that, and all of that's being used in Mexico, and it had nothing to do with Mexico, it had to do with Canada. They were supposed to stand to the border, and they do have, if you go up to Canada, you get stopped if you're on a bus, et cetera, to check your papers, but they've used that as an excuse to do all this you know, construction down on the Mexican border there and cause all the stuff that's going on down in Arizona and everything else. And so I think it's, it's, it's uh, allowed for the kind of paranoia of uh, America. Uh, greed, I think it's greed and, and greed, power, and fear. And both of those, I think, are very operative. And I think some of us kind of have been conditioned a little bit by the left or Marxist analysis, think only of the, you know, when we talk about the military industrial complex, we think of the money they're making and the power that they have. But the other side of that that's just as strong and I think that really motivates the religious right is fear. I know that in my own family, a sister that I have, she's not very well, but she just gets so reactive to Muslims. They're, but she got very upset at me because I keep Ramadan. You're not a Muslim, and, you're the, and those Muslims are dead. They're doing this and that, and I've been reading these books. And, you know, but she's just, she, it's not so much that she's to the left, she's just afraid. Uh, so I think we have to, uh, that's one thing that spiritual folks need to do. We need to calm down the demons. Mm -hmm. How would you suggest doing that? How do you think that we can um, get out of the fear that people try to trap us in to not make us active or involved in our communities? What do you think are some steps so that we well, can? Well, I think really getting involved. I mean, I think good ways of getting involved. and. Uh, I've seen some of the things with uh, young people uh, in the parish where I'm at over there in Oakland, uh, OCO is where they actually started, uh, and the community organizing and the Jesuit model, <laughs> and uh, they have been uh, really amazing what the young people are doing uh, and how they're organizing. I've been to a number of the rallies and people are so afraid of these young people and what they're going to do yeah, and all really that. Scary. <laughs> We're really scary. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, they, they are really good. And some of them have, have stepped up to the plate when it's not easy. I remember a whole bunch of middle school kids got out of school and they're going down Market Street, and there was a guy leading the chants and all that. And then all of a sudden, people started some chant uh, against George Bush. You know, it was really very negative and nasty, kind of. And he said, Whoa, 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 now we're going to be just like them. You know, well, then he tried to, tried to start a chant at some point about, We love you, George. That didn't go. <laughs> That. <laughs> we, love, we love the world, or we are the people, or something. I don't know. It did go over, but I think, I think there's a lot of that going on.